This is How to Commit Journalism, part of Capital Broadcasting's podcast network. I'm Ashley Talley, enterprise executive producer at WREL News, where, like many other media outlets around the world right now, we're dealing with a certain amount of distrust in the current political climate in which we're living. Though the tenets of journalism and its adherence to non-biased reporting haven't changed. I have come to understand that people often have their own truth, but facts remain constant. That's one reason I'm so excited about WREL's partnership with PolitiFact, which began at the end of 2019. While the fact-checking organization has partnered with some newspapers, NPR, and, and public television stations around the country, WREL is the first commercial television station to partner with them. And the process that PolitiFact demands of every report before it's published or aired is one thing that makes me really excited and proud to work with them. Because it's a different type of journalism, and I think it's exactly what's needed right now to cut through the empty political rhetoric or social media claims that often are not based in fact. We'll start with Bill Adair, who is the founder of PolitiFact. He's also the director of the DeWitt Wallace Center for Media and Democracy at Duke. PolitiFact began in 2007 as a way to fact check the 2008 presidential election. But the idea of PolitiFact started a few years before that. I was the Washington bureau chief for the Tampa Bay Times. At the time, it was known as the St. Petersburg Times, um, the largest newspaper in Florida. In 2004, I was covering the Bush campaign and covering the White House, and I felt like we needed to do more fact-checking. Um, and I, it kind of um, came to a key moment for me in 2004 at the Republican convention in New York when a Democrat, uh, Zell Miller, was speaking on behalf of President Bush and said a bunch of things that I, that I thought were probably not right, but I did not fact check them. And I felt guilty about that. And so PolitiFact was very much born from my own guilt because I felt like we in Washington journalism had not been doing enough fact checking. So as a reporter, I think, you know, we're told to report the facts, ma'am, and the facts are often what people say. You go to interview people, you, you report what they say, um, But this takes it to a different level, I think, that involves investigative journalism, too, on top of political. So talk to me about how that idea evolved in your head and um, if it looks like now what you kind of envisioned back then. I think at, at the root of PolitiFact is curiosity. As people consuming all of these political messages, we wonder when we hear a claim really? Is that true? And so PolitiFact is really just about answering people's curiosity. And at the time, I envisioned taking those statements that politicians make and boiling them down to kind of the the narrow factual claim and then telling people, is it true? Is it false? Is it somewhere in between? and with some sort of a rating device that really from the beginning was the truth of meter that we still use today. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, today it is pretty much how I envisioned it, which is very cool, um, but better because it's, it's the product of a lot of great people who took my germ of an idea and made it much better. Um, But it is different in that, we, we take a claim and we research it in the most objective way we can by talking to all sides, by finding the most objective sources. And then we do something that is unique in American journalism. We reach a conclusion about it in this very unique way. And that is very different. And so I've come to call that Um, reported conclusion journalism. That is very unique. I think, again, it goes back to J school, what you're taught. You know, you don't necessarily make the conclusion. You give all the facts and and kind of the story is what it is. But this, it's almost like an answer to a question or or a, a solution to 
like you said, that question, is this true? A lot of really good journalism answers that question, not just fact-checking, but a lot of times you'll, you'll hear something and you just wonder about it. And so a lot of what we do as journalists is just answer people's curiosity. They want to know, was that really tear gas that was used? What's, what's going on in front of the police station? Is the library going to reopen? You know, people are curious and journalism is about satisfying their curiosity. Absolutely. I think that when I work with young journalists, I always say that is the most important quality that you have to have is you have to be curious about the world around you. Can you walk me through how PolitiFact works? I think this is one big part that's not understood about it. This is a, it's a, it's not just a, Bill, you write a PolitiFact and you decide what's true, right? It's a well vetted and very specific process. So can you walk us through that? You bet. So it starts with finding the claim so um, in our case in North Carolina, Andy will look at a bunch of different places to find a claim that a politician or political group has made, and then we'll decide this is one that WRAL viewers are curious about. Let me pause and explain that the Andy Bill is referring to is WRAL's PolitiFact reporter, Paul Spey. He goes by Paul on TV, but his friends call him Andy. We'll be talking to him later in this episode, too. So if you hear Paul or Andy, we're talking about the same person. He will then go to the person or group that made the claim and ask them for their source. Where did they get the facts so they could make that claim. And that's always the first step, right? That you go to the source. Yes, and that's important because that can be the roadmap for the rest of the reporting. And often that's that gives us everything we need to make it to make a conclusion about how accurate a claim is. But so we go first to the person or group that made the claim, and then we will go to independent sources that can help us assess the accuracy of it. And it may be some of the sources that the the speaker told us, but often it'll be other people, um, independent experts, might be people in academia, might be people who collect data, um, might be pollsters, depends on the nature of the claim. But that's important to try to get independent assessments of its accuracy and try to get it Um, away from the partisan back and forth on things. At that point, uh, Andy will write the the fact check and submit it to the editors, who then do something that's very unique in journalism today. So, of course, in, in many places, if you're writing for a print publication or writing for a website, there often are... Um, fewer editors or even zero editors. And in this case, PolitiFact has three editors. And so at that point, Andy's fact check, which is recommending a particular rating of true, mostly true, half true, mostly false, false, or pants on fire, our favorite, um, that uh, fact check will go to the three editors, producers, who will then get together and determine what the rating is. And that process is unique. It's unique in American journalism. And it's actually pretty unique in fact-checking. Even the other fact-checkers that to some extent have adopted some of the same approaches as PolitiFact don't have that thorough a process. And that process allows us to raise important questions. It may result in more reporting. He may have to go back, do more research. I think it it makes our conclusion um, more likely to be solid. When the three editors have read what he's written and Andy Spey, our reporter who works for PolitiFact North Carolina with us at WREL, um, writes a, what will be the web version, right? A very long version that, it, that he also includes all of his sources, everybody he's talked to, everything. And then he does a shorter TV version too. Once the editors have read that, we we come into a chamber. I love the terms that come along with PolitiFact. Um, and I think that, that that chamber where we're talking, three editors are talking with 
the author of the fact check is really important and really integral and, like you said, really different from some other places that do it. Talk to me about how you came up with that idea and why you think it's important. It evolved. Originally, when we started doing the first fact checks, um, I was writing most of them or one of our other writers was writing them and then an editor would edit them. And basically, it was just a conversation between the writer and the editor. But as people began to see our work and comment on our work, we realized that we needed a more thorough process. And so we needed um, really um, almost a jury <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to make those conclusions. Coming up, we'll talk to Paul Spey about the Star Chamber and what it's like to have his work reviewed in such an original and thorough way. We'll also play you a clip from a Chamber review. Welcome back to How to Commit Journalism. We're talking about fact-checking. The heart of the PolitiFact process happens when three editors get together to review a reporter's story. We call that review setting the star chamber. Like many things, PolitiFact has its own lingo. WREL's PolitiFact reporter, Paul Spey, explains how it works. The star chamber is definitely unique. So the chamber uh, is where we go after I've written a story, after I've found a claim to fact check, reached out to the politician, gotten their feedback, researched it more, and come up with a general idea of whether or not they're right or wrong. And at this point, I've written a rough draft of the story, and I bring it to you and Bill and Katie, and sometimes Tyler Dukes, um, the data reporter here at REL, and um, we talk about it. I, and the four questions we go through are, you know, is this literally true? Is there another way to interpret it? Did the person bring evidence to support their claim? And then the last one is, has PolitiFact ruled on something similar in the past? And if there's precedent, then we typically follow that precedent um, just to be consistent. That's one part of it that I like. It's almost like jurisprudence of PolitiFact, yes. you know? That, that you have to go with the precedent. And as the fact checker, that takes sort of a little more uh, weight off my shoulders to say, you know, I think this is, you know, true or false or mostly true. I can rely on what's been uh, ruled in the past. I want to play some audio from a star chamber now. This will give you a glimpse behind the curtain of how every PolitiFact fact check works. We've all read uh this fact check of governor cooper the statement well it's long first of all so we've consolidated it to this paraphrased statement which says uh shopping isn't as likely to spread coronavirus as church services and i should probably change that to worship services because quote people are moving around and you don't have as much a chance to spread the virus first question is the statement literally true? This one was tough because the world's leading health organizations, none of them have compared worship services with retail stores and whether one is more likely to spread coronavirus than the other. But they do have warnings about church services and about large gatherings in general. Have they compared moving around to sitting still? Yes, and they, ha- and they do have warnings about sitting still. Uh, which is generally what we're going by here. Second question here, is there another way to read the statement? I don't think so. At first, when I looked at, when I watched this press conference, it seemed like... Uh, I am good with mostly true. I think you have really thoroughly reported it. Yeah, I think mostly true seems like the right call here. I think the way that you've, like the specific statement that we're parsing, which is, it's not all church services we're talking about. It's not all aspects of church or worship services we're talking about. We're talking specifically about Cooper's claim of moving around in retail space versus being stationary. That I think is the key here. Um, one thing I would probably want it to takes sure. days for you to do a fact check. Like this is not a this is not like a, oh I'll turn a couple of these today. Like it takes you a long time to 
go through all the people, go through the sources, um, get the experts to weigh in if you have to. But yet somehow you're able to distill that into about a minute, which I think is, is really great. Right. The, the great thing about television, I think, too, is that um, people want you to get to the point. And, and as a consumer of news, not only someone who works in it, that's what I want, too. I, right. I want people to get to the point. And to tell me, you know, whether something's true or false. Right. Is it yes, no, true, false, great. I'm moving on. My day's busy. And I think that's right. how a lot of people are. There are a lot of false claims out there. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to figure out which one is worth telling our viewers. Uh, because we have a platform on TV that's different from newspapers um, in that it's, it's much larger. It, and that, that's not a shot at newspapers at all. We just have a huge platform and hundreds of thousands of people tune in to see whether or not something's true or false. And there are a lot of things out there that are false, but if we put them on TV, then we amplify them more. And so Mm -hmm. we try to be, the the process takes a while because often we have to pick claims that are are worth checking. And then uh, checking those claims is obviously tedious because we give uh, the politician a chance to respond and back up their claim. And then, you know, we meet in these uh, star chambers as they're called and we talk about them and then there's a rating and then there's the story and then there's script writing and there's, there's a lot that goes into it. It is a long process. Just this week, you and I and Bill and Katie, another editor with, uh, with PolitiFact National have been exchanging emails over, is this fact checkable? You know, is this, this is a claim, but it's sort of like the intention of a claim. He's asking a question. Is this, so yeah, I mean, there's so much parsing to do to distill what needs to be actually fact checked. In recent years, especially with the rise of social media use in uh, the United States and just in other countries in general, um, a lot of people aren't satisfied with news reports that just, you know, lay out what both sides say. They want to know what's true and they want it in a way that is easily digestible. And I think that's what the biggest appeal is for PolitiFact is we hone in on what the claim is from a politician. We flush it out. And then in the end you get a rating. And I think that is very satisfying. Uh, not, it's very satisfying to me, uh, for mm-hmm. one, um, but also to readers and viewers. What do you love about fact checking? Before I went into it, I was like, okay, you know, is this, you hear of fact checkers at newspapers and magazines who work in the background and they make sure all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Uh, but that's not what this is. It's, it's really a form of investigative reporting where you, you hear what someone says and then you get to research it and then say whether or not they're right or wrong or somewhere in between. And there are not a lot of news outlets um, that are comfortable doing that. Now, fact-checking has caught on more. You'll see fact-checks from the Associated Press, the New York Times, all of the above. Uh, but PolitiFact and FactCheck.org were a couple of the first uh, websites to start doing it. Um, and obviously, you know, these other outlets wouldn't be doing that if there wasn't a demand. Absolutely. And I think you're right about this day and age with social media being so prevalent. And I think even more now so with um, journalism being put in doubt in some people's minds because of claims against us, you know. Um, you and I see the emails that come through to us that are, we got one this week that said that we were, um, reporting fake numbers that we were making up the coronavirus numbers at the behest of George Soros. I I don't know, this, this large group of people that, that are distrustful. And I, and I think that PolitiFact is so good at saying, no, we're pulling back the curtain. We're telling you exactly what we did. We're talking to the person who said this. We're asking them where they got their facts from. And then we're checking those facts. Um, So I do think you're right that it's really in demand and it's really important. After the break, when news comes at us all the time on every platform, how can fact-checking keep up? Bill Adair talks about fact-checking social media.
PolitiFact also now has a partnership with Facebook to help out with this proliferation of fake news. We saw with the Cambridge Analytica stuff in the last election that social media is being weaponized. Like you said earlier about one politician telling, you know, hey, you should fact check Tillis on this. You should fact check Cunningham on this. In fact, that happened this week. Both of their camps reach out to Andy with a fact check against the other one, neither of which we're pursuing (laughs) because we we tend to find them on our own. But talk to me a little about how that came about and, and how you think that's helpful. After the 2016 election, Facebook decided that it needed to help people sort out what was true and what was not, and also um, help help Facebook make decisions about how widely content should be s- spread on the Facebook news feed. And so they established relationships with fact checkers all over the world called the Third Party Fact Checking program. And PolitiFact takes part in that. And Facebook pays um, fact checkers such as PolitiFact to monitor Facebook um, posts that are, that are beginning to go viral and then fact check them. And often they're false. Often these are things that are, you know, pretty obviously false. And so PolitiFact reporters will check them out and publish a fact check on them. And then Um, Facebook can then decide to either put a a warning, they put this layer over it that's pretty cool that says, you know, this has been fact-checked by independent fact-checkers. And it's it's almost like a um, a protective covering and you have to decide, do I want to go past this and still read it? I got an alert from uh, one of my students got this over the weekend and sent it to me and was like, hey, this is, you know, the Facebook feature is working. Um, and this has been going now for almost three years, and it's uh, and I think it's quite a success. Facebook can then use that also to decide that that content will not get spread as widely in people's news feeds, and so that reduces the misinformation that's spreading. That's so interesting, and just also shows the worldwide reach of fact checking now and PolitiFact. When you were listening to Zell Miller that that day, did you ever think that that you'd be, um, I mean, honestly, you know, influencing fact around the world? No. When I was listening to Zell Miller, I was feeling guilty that I wasn't (laughs) writing a fact check about it. So we've come we've come a long way. I want to thank Bill Adair and Paul Spey for their time and for the work they're doing to report the truth. WREL is really excited to be part of PolitiFact and we look forward to a long partnership. If you're interested in hearing more about the process, check out a previous episode of How to Commit Journalism that also featured Paul Spey. In episode nine, we discussed Senator Burr's questionable stock trading ahead of the coronavirus pandemic. How to Commit Journalism is a production of WREL News and part of the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.